This is just a quick little video to show about how I extract rivets. Now, I've never felt like it was that big a deal and worth making a video on extracting rivets or drilling out rivets, but this is a viewer request. So we're just going to do a quick one. We're stuck here. What else are we going to do? So we might as well be making some videos. This is just a old side panel that I had that someone must have given me because we knew I wouldn't have built any of these wrong. But and I've already drilled, I've just taken a piece of angle, and all this is a scrap. We're just riveting a piece back together, and I've already installed some rivets, but um, there again, we'll add a few more just to show the way I'm pulling rivets, because if you're extracting rivets, you've got to have a way to pull them in. So, anyway, let's just drill a couple more holes. Okay, I'm not going to worry about deburring them or any of that stuff other than just uh, right on the front side here because we're just taking them out for demonstration purposes. But anyway, rivet guns, and we're shooting A4s here. You guys know I like these little Nico guns. I think very highly of these guns. Uh, you know, I've been through the Harbor Freight crap, and it doesn't matter which model it is. I wouldn't give you a dime for them. These are the same money or less money depending on what you get. You know, these, are, these guns, last I looked, were, I think, $49.99, $50 on Amazon. I'll throw a link down there if anybody wants to look at them. But I think these do better than anything else. I've written on mine. I've got two of these, of course. This is my A4 gun. Um, A4s, I run at 45 pounds. A5s, I run at 60 on the other gun. So, and I just marked on both of them which guns they are and what they are, so I just interchange them. Um, other options, of course, are like the Milwaukee Cordless. And I'll add a Milwaukee Cordless at some point in time, but I don't think that's the really the best way to go. These, of course, I drill with air drills. You guys know I like air tools anyway in the shop because I'm set up for air tools. And uh, I think they, I think they have, I think they do a little bit better job building your airplane. The, the air drills, you want higher speed. A lot of guys are using cordless stuff. They don't give you the speed, so you don't really get as round a hole. Now, one of the advantages, I think, of cordless drills in the shop for your airplane is if you are extracting rivets. It's very possible that with a cordless, you're going to run in that slower speed. You're going to have quite a bit more control over how you're drilling them out. But I use my standard air drills for all of them. Anyway, this is set at 45 pounds. Actually, we're set about 50 pounds, 48 or 49 pounds. Um, I haven't really used this gun hardly at all for the last year or so, so it's been set. And I added four or five drops of air tool oil to it uh, just into the air fitting. And uh, that's all it takes. So they pull really nicely at, at 45 and 50 pounds. I noticed when I had it set at 45, we're about 48 pounds there. We're going to back it down to about 47. I noticed at 45, it really wasn't wanting to pull. Okay, there's 47, and it's just barely pulling it. So this gun's got enough wear over the last, what, four or five years now that uh, it's running, you know, it's taking a little more air than maybe it used to, maybe my gauge is off, but anyway, that's a nice slow pull, it's, it's very controllable, that's about 48, 49 pounds right there, so anyway, that's what I use for air riveter, or for riveters, so that's that, so extracting them, the tools I use are pretty simple, the tools I use to extract them are my air drill, I use the same bit that I used to initially drill the holes, same size. Um, got a little body hammer, which any hammer will work. I like these body hammers. I've used them for years and they're very controllable for me. I, I've got a small pointed chisel or a flat nose chisel that's got a pretty small point on it. And I just very carefully will drill the tops off. Just like that, our tops off. And then I'll normally take this smaller punch. And this is more aimed at getting the stem out or knocking on the stem rather than on the rest of the rivet. If you get just on the stem itself and knock that, even if the um, even if the rest of the rivet wants to hang in the hole, if you can loosen up that stem and knock it forward, why that'll loosen up the rivet too. And that's the way I do all of them. Now I do have a little pair of cutters to where if I've got access to the back side, a lot of times I'll just grab onto the back with, with these little cutters. And uh, same process all the way through. And of course, the better uh, the better supported it is, you know, with the bigger structure, the easier it is to drive them out of there. 
but it's just that simple. You still got a pretty good hole. You haven't messed anything up. Move that closer if you've got a bigger structure that you put together. Why it's uh, it's a little bit uh, easier because it's better supported with all your panels. Now see, we're going to assume that that one did, didn't come out. If you just reach to the back, if you've got access to the back side, you can just grab a hold of that with those. Give it a twist and it'll come right out. So, no damage to the back side. Everything comes out just, just fine. We've still got a good hole right on the center. I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned that I've oversized that hole or, or bent it out of position or damaged it. Just take your time, drill them out easy and they'll come out. Doesn't matter if it's an A4 or an A5, they uh, work the same way. That one didn't want to come. Might have to tap it again if I had access to the back side. There again, grab a hold of it. Wiggle a little bit, comes right out. Actually, it didn't. I got the stem is all I got. There we go. There's that hole. Make sure we've got a view of it here for you. Yep, still no damage to it. Either front or back. So you can just extract them the same way all the way down. Sometimes they're in an awkward position. You have to work out them a little bit more. But they'll all come out of there the same. See if I would probably have a little more support for that. If it was actually in a structure, it would be better supported. It would probably pop right out of there. Just like that. Sometimes they're going to bounce on a little bit, and sometimes you will bend that back structure. But if you're taking it apart, you, you can usually go in and, and straighten it up. nothing supporting the end of that one. Pop that one right out. And if you've taken a stru if you're taking a structure apart and that one doesn't want to come out, you're removing this outer panel anyway. Go ahead and get that out of the way, then you've got access to your back piece. And then whether you punch it out, whether you can reach around behind and take it out, whatever the case may be. It comes right out. No fuss, no muss, no damage. So hopefully that'll help you a little bit. Hopefully you found something useful there. And uh, if you didn't have it already, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.